Mr. Hollinger. There's a charming, gorgeous, and very talented young woman here to see you. Who? Me. I thought you were serious. What kind of a thing is that to say? Of course I'm serious. Well, your own mother wouldn't recognize you from that description. I don't think I want to have lunch with you. Why? Aren't you hungry? No, I just think you're in a bad mood. Not really. Yes, really. Okay, really. What happened? I and my great American novel just got another rejection. Oh, no. Thank you for submitting your novel, City of Strangers. We regret to inform you it does not meet our present requirements for publication. That's not bad. What do you mean? They're hedging. How? They say it doesn't meet their present requirements, which strongly implies that in the very near future... And all it strongly implies is we don't want it. Don, are you going to let one letter from one publisher discourage you? Well, here are 11 others. Donald, are you going to let 12 letters from 12 publishers discourage you? <laughs> yes, I think so. Well, they're all wrong. City of Strangers is one of the finest novels of our time. Thank you. I consider that high praise indeed from someone who hasn't read it. <laughs> Only because you keep insisting I wait until it's published. How about uninsisting? No. I'll love it. Of course you will, because you love me. Oh, no, Donald. I'll be very objective. I might hate it. <laughs> then I'll kill myself. No, you'll read the first copy when it rolls off the press. I'll present you with an autographed copy at the Pulitzer Prize ceremony. Oh, fine. By that time, everybody will say the only person in the whole world who hasn't read Donald Hollinger's book is that girl. <laughs> business in town, so I stopped by to deliver the blouses. What blouses? The ones your mother hand washed for you, that I picked up the last time I had business in town. Oh, Daddy, can't you convince Mother I can do my own blouses? I doubt it. Besides, I'd have no excuse to bring you anything whenever I have business in town. You don't have to bring me anything. Can't you just come see me when you have business in town? Don't be silly. I have no other business in town. <laughs> Expecting company? Well, Donald, would you care to join us? No, thanks. I'm dining with your laundress. It looks very luxurious. It's a major studio production to cheer Donald up. He's sort of depressed. Why? Well, because... Hi, handsome. Hi. I don't need flattery. I need affection. <laughs> Daddy's here. Oh. <laughs> oh, hi, Mr. Marie. Good to see you, sir. No kiss? I'm hurt? <laughs> he isn't too depressed for a little hanky-panky, is he? <laughs> what are you depressed about? Well, who said I was depressed? I did. Oh. Oh, well, it's nothing, really, sir. In other words, you refuse to confide in me. Oh, no, no, it's not that. I because just... Because I'm a member of the older generation, then therefore wouldn't understand. Fine. Forget it. Pardon me for overstepping my boundaries. <laughs> Don't know. Confide in him, okay? Okay. Uh, Mr. Marie, I, I'm a little depressed because the novel I wrote and submitted to 12 publishers has been rejected by all 12 of them. I see. I don't suppose you've submitted it to T.L. Harrison? Who's T.L. Harrison? Never heard of T.L. Harrison? Uh, no, no, sir. Who is he? Some writer. <laughs> T.L. Harrison happens to be one of the most prominent publishers in this country. 
and who also happens to be one of my dearest friends. Daddy, you know a prominent publisher? You sound shocked, as if you thought your humble father only knew other humble fathers. Well, you just never mentioned you knew anybody as important as T.L. Harrison. He lives in Brewster, where he's been eating in my restaurant for years. Donald, how about that? My humble father knows a prominent publisher. Do you really know him well, Mr. Murray? Well, onion soup, mixed green salad, oil and vinegar, New York steak, medium rare, baked potato, sour cream and chives, coffee and custard. That well enough for you? Daddy, would you ask him to read Donald's novel? Oh, Anna, that, that would be too much of an imposition. How do you know? Well, I, I just... Assume. Since I have a sneaking suspicion that you may wind up as my son-in-law, I'd like to do something about your career. Oh, Daddy, thank you. Which up to now seems to be wallowing in failure. <laughs> thank you. You're welcome. Uh, by the way, is the book any good? Good? It's brilliant. It's vibrant. It's fresh. It's powerful. It's gripping. It's perceptive. What's it about? I don't know. Donald hasn't let me read it yet. What's the matter? Don't you confide in her either? Well, I'm waiting for the first autograph copy. You'll forgive me if I don't. I'm late already. Donald, why don't you give Daddy the novel for Mr. Harrison? I'm supposed to remind you two that you're expected for the weekend. We'll be there Saturday afternoon. Don't forget to bring some dirty laundry. <laughs> be gentle with it. It's my only child. The same to you. Oh, Donald, isn't this exciting? I mean, first a Pulitzer Prize-winning novel, then an Academy Award-winning movie, in which I'll play the lead. Well, I, I was hoping for uh, Charlton Heston. Oh, you have to admit you're a lot shorter. <laughs> It's our pleasure. How's everything? Fine, fine. Did Daddy show Mr. Harrison Donald's novel? Uh, no, he didn't. Why? Uh, because, uh, well, uh, why don't you ask him yourself? Okay. Huh? Hi, Daddy. Hello, Mr. Marie. <laughs> well, Lou, you have to speak to them. You should both be arrested. You for writing this trash, and you for letting your delinquency be contributed to. You didn't like it. He felt it missed. So I got it. I I'm sorry you don't care for the book, Mr. Marie. Your apology is not accepted. And do not call this a book. I call it trash. I can see why you're too ashamed to show it to my daughter. Well, it has nothing to do with shame. He wasn't ashamed, Daddy. I was waiting for it to be published first. Don't hold your breath. Uh, with all due respect, Mr. Marie, I, I can't believe you understood the book. I understood it perfectly. I marked the trashy parts with paper clips. And before I was halfway through, I had to go out and buy another box of clips. <laughs> well, exactly which parts did you object to? The beginning, the middle, and the end. <laughs> Other than that, I was crazy about it. How about a nice cup of coffee? Michael and Rosemary in the city of strangers or anything like Donald and Anne in the city of New York. I'll strangle you. <laughs> Why? Their relationship is indecent. Indecent? Mr. Marie. Oh, I... Daddy, that's just ridiculous. Have you read the book? No, but I have faith. So have I, Lou. Oh, you have? Well, come, all ye faithful, and listen to this. <laughs> Michael is a writer in love with an actress. He is also one of modern literature's greatest swingers. <laughs> Page one. Michael and Rosemary meet at a party. A party that, in my opinion, would be too wild for a Cossack. Let's see. <laughs> Over my dead body. <laughs> After the party, he takes her home. Is this the way a gentleman talks to a lady he's only known for three hours? Let's see. <laughs> page 67. I'd like you to explain the behavior on page 67. Wait a minute, but that is not behavior. That's Michael's neurotic fantasy. Let's see. <laughs> My son, I'd wash his neurotic fantasies out with soap. <laughs> Mr. Marie, what I want to convey is... What that... I want to convey is that I wouldn't show this book to a man like T.L. Harrison with a ten-foot pole. Oh, Daddy, you promised. I didn't promise, I offered. The offer is hereby rescinded. How about a nice cup of coffee? <laughs> Under the prevailing circumstances, Donald and I are leaving. Honey, look, I don't want to create a family quarrel. Let's... No, that's all right, Donald. 
Daddy, would you be so kind as to return Donald's manuscript? <laughs> Goodbye, Daddy. Goodbye, Mother. I'll be sending all of my dirty blouses parcel post. Person to person. <laughs> I don't know. I don't think we should have left that way. I mean, a man does have a right not to like a book. Mm -hmm. Now, I'll admit he was a little violent about it, but he's entitled to his opinion. Mm -hmm. Anne, hmm. you're home. Oh, thank you, Donald. Gee, you must have been driving awfully fast. Never went over the speed limit once in two and a half hours, and you haven't said one word since we left Brewster. It's this book. I can't turn my eyes away. What page are you on? 453. 453 already? I'm only reading the pages that are paper clipped. <laughs> Donald. What? Right here. Where Michael tells Rosemary he's got the stomach flu, and then he goes out with Jennifer. Was that the time you canceled our bowling gate at the very last minute? Of course not. And what about on page 21, where Michael picks up that girl on Coney Island? Was that one I was in Connecticut doing that summer stock Honey, <laughs> it had nothing to do with it. Well, what about on page 51, where Michael and Rosemary have that big fight? Was that the time you and I... No. I didn't even ask you yet. I don't know what you were going to ask me. It had nothing to do with it. You mean to say that none of Michael's experiences are based on any of your experiences? Right. Practically none. Practically? <laughs> Honey. What I'm trying to explain is that every writer subconsciously includes bits and pieces of himself in every character he writes. Page 37? No. 45? No. Oh, Donald, not 61 through 68. Now, you cut it out. The characters of Michael and Rosemary are absolutely and unequivocally not modeled after you and me. Donald, I can certainly see that Rosemary and I are nothing alike. I just wasn't too sure about you and Michael. <laughs> Honey, li li listen to me. City of Strangers is an exercise in imagination. It's a pure fiction. I dreamed up the, the story and the characters and put them down on a piece of paper because I thought the idea was important enough. That's all there is to it. Understand? I think it's a very good book, Donald. I really do. Thank you. You know... If the parts without paper clips are as good as the parts with paper clips, I think it could be a bestseller. Before you can sell, you have to publish. Donald, we're going back to Brewster. Drive up to Brewster now? I'm just as soon as I make a phone call. Well, honey, it's a long way back up to Brewster. No longer than it is from Brewster to here. True. Hello, operator. I'd like to place a person-to-person -person call to Mr. T.L. Harrison in Brewster, New York. No, I don't have the number. Thank you. If my father won't give the book to Mr. Harrison, then I will. Come to think of it, I'm going to give it to my father, too. He's already read it. Not the book. A piece of my mind. <laughs> Imagine Daddy, of all people, thinking I was anything like Rosemary. Hello? Hello, is Mr. Harrison in, please? Oh. Oh, oh he is. I see. Oh, did he leave a number where he can be reached? Oh. Oh! Oh, really? Oh, thank you so much. Yes, thank you very much. Donald, that was the maid. She said he's going out for the evening, but in case of an emergency, he can be reached at 9 o'clock at La Parisienne Restaurant. Y your father's restaurant? That's right, that's right. My father's restaurant. Come on, Donald, let's go. Right about it. Thank you. Only 40 clips to go. <laughs> Mr. Marie. Good evening. Do you have a reservation? No, I'm afraid we don't. I'm sorry. Without a reservation, it'll be a nine-hour wait. It isn't necessary for us to dine. If you would merely show us the table of Mr. T.L. Harrison, we would have a few words with him. He isn't here. Oh, Daddy, I just talked to his maid. She told me he's having dinner here. Now, if you just point him out. I will not point him out. You want to give him that. And uh, maybe we better leave. Absolutely not. Very well. We'll find him eventually. A table for two, please. <laughs> 
We'll discuss this at another time. Daddy, if you don't give me a table, I'm gonna make a scene. I'll hold my breath till I die. That didn't work when you were eight, and it won't work now. Right? I'm gonna stand on the table and do what Rosemary did on page 46. What's that? Give her a table. <laughs> this way, please. The table for two has just been vacated. Order wisely. It's not on the house. <laughs> Good evening. Madam Desires? The table with Mr. T.L. Harrison, please. Sorry, madam, I don't know the gentleman. Would you care for a cocktail instead? Oh, thank, oh, thank you. you. What are you doing? I'm trying to see who looks like a prominent publisher. Oh, I've got a clue. Daddy said he starts off with onion soup. Excuse me. This is ridiculous. Can't we just... Good evening, Mr. Harrison. Sorry, my name is Winfield. Oh, I thought that was onion soup. Navy bean. Madam? Is that onion soup? Uh, yes, madam. Is there something wrong with it? Oh, no, no. I uh, was just curious. If madam would care for some, madam's waiter would be happy to take her order. Oh, no, no, thank you. I, I was just interested in that particular bowl of onion soup. Who gets it? That gentleman at the next table. But I can assure madam there's enough onion soup in the kitchen to float a minesweeper. Oh. By the way, it's Mademoiselle, not Madam. <laughs> Excuse me. I'm very sorry to intrude, Mr. Harrison, but I couldn't help notice that your waiter's been busy and you've been waiting for your soup, and I thought as long as I'm coming along to speak to you anyway, I might as well bring it at the same time. This is this book I want to discuss with you. See, it was written by a very dear friend of mine, and I thought maybe you'd like it. I could just tell that you really aren't Mr. Harrison at all, are you? I'm terribly really sorry. I'm really, I'm so sorry. I just thought you were, but you weren't, and I'm very sorry I'll take the soup back to you. Are you lost, young lady? Oh, no, no, no. The young lady's not lost. She's not lost at all. The young lady was just looking for the young lady's room. Well, he's either not here or he's into his entree or he's finished and left. I know I could have gotten him interested in your novel. Honey, he probably would have hated it. And this way I don't have to face the pain and disgrace of 13 rejection slips all in the same month. See? Look at the bright side. <laughs> nice try. Not so nice. Good night, Lou. Very good. Oh, thank you very much. Glad you enjoyed it. See you next time. Excuse me. Is this Anne? Aren't you Lou's daughter? Yes. Yes, I am. I thought I recognized you. Mind This is my daughter, Anne, and uh, uh, this is her boyfriend, uh, Don Hollinger. And uh, this is one of my oldest and dearest customers and friends. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. T.L. Harris. <laughs> oh, Mr. Harrison, what a pleasure to meet you. Thank you. And this is Donald Hollinger. How do you do? Pleased to meet you, sir. Okay, T.L., no blocking the aisles. <laughs> you have a lovely daughter, Lou. <laughs> yes, well, you've seen one daughter, you've seen them all. <laughs> Donald is a novelist. Really? I'm a publisher myself. <laughs> y yes, we know. And Donald's written a novel, and it's called City of Strangers. Well, I'd love to read it sometime. <laughs> well, you know what they say, there's no time like the present. Why don't you take it with you? Uh, uh, no, don't take it. Why not? <laughs> oh, well, uh, because it needs a lot of work. You know how novels are. Well, of course I do. I'll give it special attention. Well, well I appreciate it, sir. Thank you very much. Not at all. Good night, young man. I'll be in touch. Good night, Anne. Well, good night. Thank you. Good night, Lou. Good night. <laughs> <laughs> I knew it. I knew he'd publish it. Well, honey, not so fast. He hasn't even read it yet. Oh, isn't this exciting? Let's go. Let's oh, go. Wait a minute. Where are you going? Well, we're going back home to New York. Oh, just a minute. You can't drive back at this time of night. Sit down. Stay over and drive back tomorrow. Mario. No check. <laughs> Onion soup? Oh, no, thanks. I already found him. <laughs> They tell me why you didn't write a book about boots or about a young couple who climb Mount Rushmore and discover the true meaning of America. 
what's the matter with a cookbook? Mr. Marie, I tried to write a sensitive novel about a young couple who are doomed because they didn't have the benefit of parents like you and Mrs. Marie. Show me where it says that. Daddy, it was stated allegorically. Sure, it's some kind of trick. I think Don's right. How do you know you haven't read it? Oh, I read some of it. I got interested when you were out buying paper clips. <laughs> and you liked it? I laughed a little and I cried a little. What more can you ask? A more wholesome portrait of our daughter, for one thing. Lou. Lou? Our daughter's a good girl. Good sense. Good taste. She can take care of herself anywhere. Now, I believe that. Don't you? Of course I believe it. It's just that it was a long book and I, I read it fast. I think I will have some coffee. I'll get it. Good morning, young novelist. How goes the battle? Coming right along, thank Good. you. Good. Good morning, Hello. Tim. Hello. Come on in. Mr. Harris. Mrs. Marie, how are I'm you? just fine. And you? Thank you, fine. Hello there, Anne. Hello, Mr. Harrison. Would you like some coffee? Oh, no, thanks. I'm on my way with the club. I just stopped in for a minute to see this young man, Mr. Hollinger. When I got home last night, I read your novel. <clears throat> yes, sir. I like it. Well, thank you, thank you. It's the kind of material we keep our eyes open for around Tornado Publishing. Well, sir, that, that's, that's very exciting, very exciting. That's the word, exciting. The kind of book that catches your eye the minute you step into that drugstore or hit that newsstand. Zap! <laughs> City of Sin. <laughs> Excuse me, Mr. Harrison. The title of the book is City of Strangers. <laughs> yes, well, you let us worry about the title. A title like time is money. I did mark certain pages with paper clips. <laughs> I knew it. Didn't you like them, Mr. Harrison? They need work. I see. I've been talking to the boy about watering down certain of the passages. Exactly. Every time you reach a scene that really has a chance to sizzle, you water it down. Don't do it, fella. Let it sizzle. At Tornado, we like to call a spade a spade. Spell it out. Don't fool around. Uh, sir, sir, that, that wasn't my first consideration. You see, I was trying to say something. Well, you try to sell something first, young novelist. <laughs> you can say anything you want later. Stop by my office Monday afternoon. We'll discuss the rewrite and the cover. Something really, really exciting. Michael and Rosemary. You know what I mean? Yes, I think so. You know what we say at Tornado? The public always judges a book by its cover. <laughs> uh, Mr. Harrison, I I'm afraid what you're asking isn't my style. You think it over, young novelist, and let me know. So long, Lou. Goodbye. Charming to see you again, Mrs. Mer oh, delightful to see you, Miss. <laughs> Really lovely. Excuse me. Amazing. A man eats your onion soup for years and you don't know the first thing about him. Well, how about a few complimentary words on Donald's integrity? I'm very proud of you, Donald. My compliments on your integrity. She's very proud of you. So are we, Don. Thank you, Mother. And Lou, it takes a big man to admit when he's wrong. Yes, it does. It certainly does. And no one ever denied I was a big man. <laughs> <laughs>